I'm starting to think it's going to be a long day. Hello and welcome to Sunset Seekers. We're so glad that you could stop by to check out this video. I am determined to figure out once and for all how to back my fifth wheel. Now I've looked at literally dozens of YouTube videos and I have yet to come across one that really answered the questions that I felt like I needed to have answered. I really need to get a feel for backing my fifth wheel and basically what I want to know is the mechanics of it all. Uh, in other words, I want to understand where I need to position my rig, how far I need to turn my wheel in order to get my rig to respond and turn into the spot. And so far I have yet to find a video, and I'm not saying that there's not one out there, there may very well be a good video out there, I just haven't found it yet. Now today I'm going to experiment with blindside backing. Now I'm not sure that that's the correct terminology for it, that is the terminology that I've given it. And what I mean by blindside backing is when you're trying to back in on the passenger side, you have very poor visibility, as opposed to strong side backing. Again, another word that I may have made up, I may not have, I may have heard that somewhere, but strong side backing is where you can look out your driver's side window and you got pretty good view of the spot that you're backing into and your rig. So it, strong side backing is much easier to do than blindside backing. I'm going to do a series of experiments to kind of get a feel for my rig and uh, Bear in mind that this is all very subjective. It depends upon the size of your rig. It depends on the length of your rig. It depends on whether or not it is a fifth wheel or a travel trailer. Uh, it depends on the turning radius of your truck. But surely there is a good general rule out there. And as of yet, I have not found one on YouTube. So I'm gonna make my own video. Now my church was gracious enough to grant me permission to use the church parking lot, so I want to give a special thanks to New Covenant Church in Longview, Texas. Thank you so much. You are a blessing. So I've got the whole parking lot to myself. It's a beautiful day. Let's get started. Now if you saw my Lake Claiborne State Park video, you know that I had a difficult time getting into that spot. And so that's one of the main reasons, but not the only reason, that uh, I wanted to take this time today to kind of get the feel for my RV, and I never really have done that. So. I would certainly recommend that if you have the opportunity like I do to have a whole parking lot to yourself, then take that opportunity and learn the best that you can how to back your fifth wheel and get the feel for it. Now I'm driving a Ford F-250, the best engineered and manufactured truck in the world without equal. Wait a minute, wait a minute, all you Chevy and Dodge guys out there, I'm not slamming your truck. Chevy and Dodge make nice trucks too. I would buy a Chevy or a Dodge or a Toyota if Ford didn't exist. Now one of the first things that you can do to kind of get a feel for your rig is to see just how many times you can turn your steering wheel. Now for my truck, it appears to be a little over two revolutions. Let's look at that again. Here is one revolution, and two revolutions, and a little over. Okay, here's our first experiment. We are going to turn our wheel one full revolution, 360 degrees. Now, I've pulled in tight to the spot, which is what you need to do to give your truck enough room when you're backing into a spot. You don't want to pull out too far on the other side of the road. You want to pull in tight on the spot. Now, I don't know what the standard size RV spot is. I don't think that there really is one. It seems to vary widely from each state park or RV campground that we've been to so far. I believe that the standard width of a state park RV site is supposed to be 20 feet, but I'm not 100% sure on that. What I do know is that my driveway at home is just a little over 18 feet in width. So I decided to try my first experiment at 16 feet. So I measured it out at 16 feet, and 16 feet appears to be a little over one and a half parking spaces. I thought that would be a good place to start just to get some of the mechanics down and figure out exactly what my rig is doing when I turn the wheel and to, uh, to try to figure out how quickly it will respond to each complete revolution of the steering wheel. Now blindside backing requires that you turn your wheel to the left to get the initial direction of your rig headed in the right direction. So remember that. So for my first experiment, I turned my wheel one complete revolution to the left and I lined up the back of my rig a few feet forward of the first cone and here's what happened.
One complete turn of my steering wheel for a 16 foot width seemed to work rather well. Okay, this time let's make it a little bit tighter. That was 16 feet. Let's make it 12 feet. After a few other tests and spending an hour or so learning about how my fifth wheel responds to the steering wheel, my final test was much more precise. I remeasured my cones for 12 feet. Now this seems like the standard size width of sites at the state parks that we've been to recently to include Lake Claiborne. So I was interested to find out what it would take to get my fifth wheel consistently into this space. I decided to change up a few things from my previous experiment due to the tighter space. I knew I would need a tighter turning radius, so I decided to go all out and turn my steering wheel two complete revolutions, and theorizing that this would cause my fifth wheel to respond twice as fast as my last experiment, I decided to line up the back of my rig with the first cone, as opposed to pulling forward a few feet. And uh, this is what happened. As you can see, I made it between the cones, but I ended up on the far side or the driver's side cone. I discovered that with a simple adjustment by pulling forward and then straightening out my rig a little bit sooner, I was able to make it dead center into the spot. All in all, this was a great day and I found a formula that works for me, so let's recap. Here are five things that I've taken away from my travels and experience so far, and I hope that you find this information helpful. But if you learn nothing else from this video, I want to encourage you that if you have experienced difficulty backing in your fifth wheel, travel trailer, or motorhome, you are not alone. With a little bit of practice and experience, you will be a pro before you know it. Number one on my list is pull in tight on the spot. Now, a 90 degree blindside back is the most difficult situation that you will find yourself in while trying to back your rig into the spot during your travel, so we have focused on that specific situation for this video. This is the same situation that I found myself in at Lake Claiborne, not to mention that there were steep six to 10 inch drops in the pavement on either side of the Camping Loop Road, and also a culvert, a tree, and a couple of other obstacles that made backing into that spot a challenge. The good news is that not all campgrounds that you visit will pose quite this much of a challenge. In fact, oftentimes, even though you may have to pull in on the blind side, the site will be slightly or sharply angled, which makes things a bit easier for a number of reasons that we haven't covered in this video. But with an angled blind side back, you will still need to pull in tight, but in that situation, you should pull forward of the spot and angle out, positioning your rig on the same angle as the site, as much as possible at least, and this will give you better visibility when you start backing. I plan on doing a video on that at some point in time in the future. But when you find yourself faced with a 90 degree blindside backing situation, the first thing to remember is that you need to pull in tight on the spot, and to, just to clarify, what I mean by this is that when you are blindside backing, you want to position your rig as far to the right on the road as you can before making your turn into the spot. The farther that you pull over to the right, the more space that your truck will have to maneuver when you roll out of your turn and attempt to straighten your rig. Another thing that I want to note before moving on to number two is that I also positioned my rig a few feet forward of the spot and this seemed to work for me. Which leads me to number two and that is turn your wheel all the way to the left. Blindside backing requires that you turn your wheel to the left to get your rig headed in the right direction when beginning your turn into the spot. Now, 
I discovered that turning my wheel to complete revolutions seemed to be a good formula for my rig. Bear in mind that this may not work for your rig, but I think that this is a good general rule to apply. I read somewhere that you should begin making your turn when the axle of your rig first crosses the plane of the spot, or the first cone if that makes what I'm saying a little more clear. For my rig, this proved to be way too late to begin making my turn, and I ended up way off the mark. This all depends on the length of your rig, but I would recommend this for a start. If you have no idea how your rig responds to the steering wheel, remember this formula. Pull in tight on the spot, pull forward a few feet of the spot, turn your wheel two complete turns to the left, and then begin your turn. Number three is be careful not to jackknife. It's important to remember that when your rig begins to respond, which may seem to take five or six feet into the turn, from that point on, it will likely respond much quicker than you had anticipated and you should pay very close attention to where your trailer is in relation to the cab of your truck. You can easily bust out the rear window on your truck if you're not careful. Make certain that when your fifth wheel begins to get close to the cab of your truck to roll out of the turn. Now I would recommend turning your wheel in the opposite direction until it stops. And then, through a combination of using a spotter, looking through your back window, and watching your mirrors, determine your next move. Number four, straighten up and reposition. Now this point is going to be short and sweet. Get your rig as straight and far into the spot as you can and leave yourself as much room as possible to then pull forward so that you can straighten up and reposition your rig where you want it in the center of the spot. Now once you get to this point the pressure is off. Your rig is in the spot and hopefully at this point you should have pretty good visibility to figure out where you want to reposition your rig. Now you can relax and think about how much space you need to extend your slides. It's also at this point that you need to make note of where your power box and your water hookups are and that'll help you to determine where you need to reposition. Number five, take your time. Don't get in too big of a hurry. Even if you find yourself with an audience on a one-way RV campsite loop with fellow RVers behind you waiting on you to get your rig into the spot so that they can pass, if you haven't experienced this yet, you likely will at some point in the future sooner than you think. But when you do, remember to take your time. Think about what you're doing. Don't be embarrassed to get out of your truck multiple times to assess the situation if you have to, even if you have a spotter. Sometimes there is no substitute to seeing it with your own two eyes to get the idea clearly in your mind as to what is happening, where your rig is headed, and what you need to do next. Well, once again, thank you so much for watching this video, and we do hope that you found this video to be useful. If you're new to Sunset Seekers, we hope that you'll become a subscriber and check out some of our other videos. So be sure to click that subscribe button, and don't forget to like and leave a comment below, especially if you have a suggestion that I may have left out of this video, or if you have a story about one of your experiences backing into an RV site, we want to hear it.